look slender. <laughs> Okay, Calvin Castine, and the good news is I'm going to be off camera for most of the, almost, I think, the entire show today, so that's the good news. <laughs> and the really good news is we're here at the Samuel D. Champlain History Center. I want to make sure I got that exactly right. Correct. All yeah. right. And we have the, uh, I know you're the owner here, but what's your official title for the History Center? The I call myself the founder and president. Founder and president. But I have many more titles. <laughs> <laughs> You can give yourself whatever title you That's want right. when you're a founder and president, I guess. That's right. <laughs> and sole proprietor. But <laughs> And we also got Kimberly, uh, excuse me, Celine Racine Paquette, and then Kimberly LeMay LeCourcy. Yes. Is that how you say it? LeCourcy. Yes. And uh, they have a new book. I'm going to hold it up, hoping the camera will see it here. If uh, not, we're going to be looking at it very, very shortly. Franco America, Images of America, Franco Americans in the Champlain Valley. Uh, whose idea to put this book together? <laughs> Neither one wants to take credit. No, it was Celine's <laughs> idea, that's uh, for sure. <laughs> well, it started with the Champlain Valley um, Heritage Partnership Area, Jim Brangan, who is the director of that, and I'm on the Cultural Historical Advisory Board. And we had done during the, uh, well, you're familiar with the Cutting Yassaye year, when we had the presentation in Vermont, right. and we did something in St. Jean, Quebec, and he said, we need to do something French in New York. And we talked about having a French festival in Champlain, and then anyway, we came up with the idea of the book. But I said, I'm not doing it until I contact Kimberly, see if she's interested. <laughs> <laughs> so I got her involved, and she was willing to do this. She's got wonderful historical background. Okay, you guys uh, have... Uh worked together before, right? Yes. What was the project? It was a book similar to this, but on Champlain. Champlain, New York. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So now this is uh, your second uh, endeavor together? Mm -hmm. and you're still collaborators, yes. And mm -hmm. you're still talking to each other? <laughs> 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 now, today's June 23rd, and if we're going to be talking Franco-Americans in the Champlain Valley, it's probably an appropriate day of the year to be talking about this, because tomorrow is... St. Jean-Baptiste Day. <laughs> and if you talk about uh, uh, parties and uh, French parties in uh, New York State, well, they used to have a whole bunch, you know, downtown Champlain, as we're seeing in this book here, used to be crowded uh, this time of the year, mm -hmm. many years ago. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. Uh, so your interest in uh, Franco-Americans, what's, what's your interest, Celine? Well, I've always been interested in Franco-Americans um, because that's my background. Uh, both my parents were born in Quebec, and I consider myself, of course, a Franco-American. I was born here in the United States. Um, then I started the Samuel de Champlain History Center, and I have a large collection of um, Franco-American literature, very large collection. I believe it's the largest collection in New York State. Mm -hmm. Oh, well, is it uh, all in French? Or? French and English, both. Mm -hmm. The same things in French and English or different? Uh, different. Different, different things. Mm -hmm. I was up about a month ago, as I told you, off camera up at the Hemingford and they, had, they opened their new archive, Hemingford. It's not a museum, but it's archives there. And, uh, you know, they speak in French, then they say the same thing in English. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so it takes twice as long to, mm -hmm. <laughs> to do something mm -hmm. up there because they, they speak in both languages, mm -hmm. especially in along this, uh, this border here. And Kimberly, uh, La Courcy doesn't sound very French to me. La Courcy is not LeMay, <laughs> more so. I, I've been working on my genealogy since I was 15. And How many years is that? It's, it's a long time. <laughs> <laughs> I never asked them how old they are. Yeah. <laughs> how many years ago were you 15? <laughs> no, no, I'm not going to tell me. Go ahead. I'm not going to. <laughs> Both sides of my family, the LeMay side, you know, my father's side, French, the, the Dubois. way back, and the Dubois, and the Ash Lines and the as Ash well. Oh, yeah. Well, Ash Lines yeah. and Champlain kind of go together. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, one of the founders of the town. So, absolutely have an interest in, in their heritage. Okay. Now, uh, uh, I know Ash Lines and Dubois, uh, LeMay's uh, from the Champlain Valley? They are. Um, more south. Peasleyville, um, Brew. Um, some in Vermont as well, but absolutely in the Champlain Valley. Okay, so you're part of this heritage then on all sides. Long-time residents, mm -hmm. though, here came over, you know, early to Quebec 
and then fled into the United States on all sides. Yeah, and you know, it's uh, my personal uh, background. My my great great grandfather, uh, uh, Joseph Francois, who became known as Frank Castein, he uh, arrived in the 1860s, and on my mother's side, the Trudeaus, uh, my mother was the first. Uh, generation, as uh, Celine said, she is off camera. Uh, my mother was the first generation. Uh, half her brothers and sisters were born in Canada, and her, the other half were born in, uh, in New York, and some in Vermont, I think. And but they finally settled in the uh, Kings Bay area. So it's uh, it's certainly a, a part of this this region. Uh, probably more so as f if you look at Clinton County in the Northern Tier than in the Plattsburgh area. I would think that that sound. Right, do you folks? Well, the northern tier of Plattsburgh. Plattsburgh had a large French uh, population, uh, French speaking, because uh, uh, St. Peter's Church in Guy St. Pierre mm -hmm. was built by the French, and there's the French Quarter, Champlain Street, Montcalm Street, Lafayette, and that was the French Quarter. Um, they had a French newspaper, uh, so you know, there, there were some prominent French citizens there. And as you can see in the book, the first mayor of Plattsburgh was Franco American. Was he? Mm -hmm. I know you go up to Tupper Lake and you see hear a lot of names that you hear yes. in the Moors and yes. the area yeah, here a lot. Tupper of, Lake has French also. And uh I'll do about forty thirty years ago now. Seventy eight is that uh, eighteen yeah, thirty years ago. No, forty years ago. Uh I was working for Woodman of the World and I had to go to Livermore Falls, Maine to work with a field rep out there and uh his name was Rick Dupre. And they get there, and it's all French Canadian names. Mm -hmm. And I know there's areas like that, like I know there's areas in Massachusetts like that, where some French Canadian would come down, get a job, and say, "Hey, folks, <laughs> come on down." There are large areas there's in Massachusetts and Rhode Island, and Vermont, New Hampshire. Yeah, the mills uh, attracted yeah, the, the French Canadians yeah, somebody, for work. Yeah, they'd get a job, and they'd. Right. Send send for more, and you know That's the right. mills needed help, and uh, so it worked out. So, mm -hmm. so you've approached this in in, a, in a, several different areas, and it's important for the people on our side of the lake to realize that you consider the Champlain Valley both sides of the lake, which it is, well, right? The lake is shared <laughs> by the two states. Yes. Right. <laughs> so the book isn't just about uh, the New York side; no. it's also the mm -hmm. Vermont side. Mm -hmm. All right. So how many? Uh, Hours did it take to put this together? Uh, I did not keep track. I don't know if Kimberly did. I did not keep track either, but it was, <laughs> it was a lot harder than we thought it was going to be to find photo documentation of the French here. Um, there weren't many repositories that had large collections, um, and there didn't seem to be a focus on maintaining that history. So we're kind of glad in the end that we've been able to do this because at least now there's something documenting it. Well, I think that's... Uh... Part of the problem when uh, when you're trying to research the, the French part of it, you know, you say there's an occasional newspaper, but for the most part, the history of the area was, was written by English-speaking people, mm -hmm. and they they wrote about <laughs> English-speaking people. So mm -hmm. the French village and here in Champlain and the other French speakers were weren't uh, necessarily uh, put out there. You know, you we talk about Ashline, it hasn't been till the recent couple of decades that the Ashlines have gotten the respect they mm -hmm. deserve for mm -hmm. for being one of the original families here. That's right. Yeah. Yeah, we planted a tree here in Champlain during the festival <coughs> for our first settler, Pris Gasnay. Right. Which was, became Ashline, but yeah. and we had representatives of the Ashline family there. Yeah. Right. I remember Charlie was Charlie, there yes. helping to dig it. Yeah. And you go across to uh, La Cole and there's still Ashlines there. Yeah. You know, there's, they yeah. still have that, that spelling. I don't think people realize how many names have changed. <laughs> that is one of the biggest, biggest areas. If your name ended in E-A-U or E-A-U-L-T, it suddenly becomes an O, like Deneau or Tetro or Tetro or, Tetreau or yeah, Albert Favreau Tetreau. or yeah. you know, whatever. Yeah, Favreau's a, yeah. a role. And then there are the ones that were the literal translations. <laughs> La Roche became um, stone and Napiai became rock. Or or Dubois became and woods. woods and, yeah, and Poisson became fisher and on and on it goes. You could write a book on all the changes. Yeah, yeah. somebody would say, well, your name is Poisson, what, what does that mean? 
fish. So okay, yeah. you're now yeah. you're now Celine Fish instead. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, and the spellings is just you know uh, my late friend Clyde Rabidou Senior. He was over seventy spellings of the original Rabidou That's name. That's right. Yes. Over yeah. seventy different spellings yeah. across the mm -hmm. North America. Just incredible. Yeah. And, uh, you know, as I was telling you off camera, you know, we got the, another easy example in our area is the Gagnols. The G-A-G-N-O-N is Gagno, but most of the Gagnols over here are G-O-N-Y-O. -O, and mm -hmm. the ones who are G-A-G-N-O-N are now Gagnons. They're no longer Gagnols. Mm -hmm. And we see it with the Tremblays. Dean Trombley is Dean Trombley, but his grandsons are Tremblays, <laughs> you know. Mm -hmm. So it's, uh, it changes. It does, it really does. So that's why it's hard to do genealogy or any research. You have to kind of sit there and say, well, what do you think it sounded like, you know? Yes, what, what, did, did, yeah. what did that person writing it down hear? Yeah, yeah, that's right. That's how, yeah. The, yeah. That's how it got entered in the, in the records, was what that person heard, mm -hmm. because that average person back then didn't know how to spell their name. And mm -hmm. That also makes the whole French influence less... You know, mm -hmm. forthright. People don't see it as much because so many names have changed. They don't immediately associate them with having French heritage. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. The, the people are f with a name like Woods or whatever. Yeah. We'll, we'll go back and say, "What? I'm, mm -hmm. I'm French." You yeah. Know? Well, yeah. <laughs> I didn't know that. I'd like to piggyback what Kimberly was saying. It was very, very difficult to. You know, we could spend a whole day in Burlington and have three photos. It was that difficult to. to go through the archives at the diocese or the archives at St. Michael's or uh, personal contact somebody's office. So by the time you get up to the office and took that photograph you know, <laughs> and then make sure the company, this, this company was difficult. To, you know, they had expectations that the resolution had to be oh, right. Okay. So yeah, they yeah. rejected a lot of photos. So. It, yeah, you yeah, see so, some. Yeah, so those were the hours spent uh, yeah. just chasing yeah. around. Yeah. yeah, if you're you're self-publishing, well, you, you sometimes, uh, you know, I know, again, talking about Clyde Rabbit, we put out lots of books, yeah. and some of them, the resolution wasn't there, yeah. but it's either that or nothing, so you go with what, yeah, what you can right, get, yeah. you know, yeah. in those cases there, but this Acadia here has got some standards, and, you it know, does, they, it does. they want to get a reputation yeah. for somebody who buys an, an Acadia book, they can read the, see the pictures, so. And then I had people say to me, um, well, what do you mean by Franco-American? What, what is that? Is that know? spaghetti? Is that spaghetti? <laughs> <laughs> French-Canadian. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so, yeah. And uh, history, I know, has been important to you, Celine, but also to you, Kimberly. Yes. You're a history teacher? or what, yes, what, uh, history professor, professor. Professor. I can't say teacher. you got to go professor here at the Siena, right? <laughs> Well, yeah, I went to school enough years that I'll take it. <laughs> <laughs> you, you, professor where? At uh, Siena. Yeah, at Siena, okay, yeah. Part-time at Siena, yeah. Oh, part-time, okay. You know, the time putting books together. Putting books together, <laughs> And yes. taking care of a two-year-old. <laughs> and taking care of a two-year-old. <laughs> that could be full-time. Uh, so, how did you decide, uh, outside of picture quality, what you put in, what you put out, does that a lot of decisions? Depending on what we got, yeah. Yeah, sometimes you may have said, well, I wish we had a better picture to show this, but yeah. this is as it, good it, as we're going to get. Yeah, it depends on what we got, and then we decide on the categories because religion is a very important part of the Franco-American, so yes. we, we have some of that. Then social life is very important to Franco-Americans, all their societies, and because they spoke French, they... they gathered together and had their social gatherings in, in French. Um, but we really found a mother load in um, Winooski. Winooski still continues to have a French festival every year. Uh -huh. And that's why you'll see a, a chapter, whole chapter devoted to Winooski. Yeah. So you're after those... Is, was Winooski uh, Burlington's uh, French village? Or was <laughs> <laughs> it just developed that way. The mills, the mills in Winooski, attracted a lot of uh, French Canadians, and then they built uh, their school and then the church. And, yeah. and I think because some of the leaders of the community were French, yeah. that's where you got some preservation of the activities uh -huh. and you know day-to-day -day life. And some of the leaders in industry, their photographs were there. Yeah. So, yeah. 
that you didn't find in other communities. Cause and, just... and there's a, a couple of historians that are still into it. Yes. So they, they were helpful. You know, they're proud of that heritage. Yeah. So and that helps. So you, yeah. And you got to get them while they're still here because that's mm -hmm. exactly. going exactly. to be a rare breed. <clears throat> mm -hmm. Now you say religion. Uh, we know that not every person in France is a, is a Catholic, but uh, the Catholic religion in France in French, we've kind of ran hand to hand, hand in hand around here. Yeah, in now, I know there's in French Quebec. Huguenots and so on, but yeah, uh, you in know. Quebec is really yeah, Catholic religion. <laughs> so when you're talking religion, you're talking basically the the, the Catholics, because you know, and, and we're grateful for anybody who's doing genealogy for the records that those Catholic churches kept. And I you know talk mm -hmm. to people who've done genealogy, and they say it's not so much so in the English. No. language with the you know the Protestant yeah. churches and so on they just didn't keep as extensive a records for whatever reason that I don't know but uh, so you know a lot of that's our... true the genealogy of my family we go back from the arrival of my ancestor and you know I'm the 14th generation from the ancestor and we have all that recorded and then some you know the, the marriages and where they died and where they were buried and everything is all from the church records yeah it's, it's incredible. It's fantastic that they have. So you've done some re family research too, you said, Kimberly? Yeah, I've done quite a bit, but the French church records are amazing. I have a, a, a relative who's actually been able to go all the way back, you know, well into the 18th century, sometimes into the 17th century with those records, um, which are amazing. Mm -hmm. You know, that documentation for this population probably wouldn't exist um, aside from those that were wealthy enough to be in probate or have wills or have been in the newspapers, uh, we wouldn't have that documentation without them. Yeah, well, uh, we've got a, <laughs> a great resource up here. Uh, I forget the exact name of it, but uh, the newspaper uh, archives. Yes, uh, the North of New York. Yeah. yeah, I forget exactly the exact yeah. title of it, but it's, it's just an incredible resource for newspaper archives. But, you know, I know I search family names of people that I know were here, but not all of them make, made the obituary columns, you know? Even. And then, then the Northern New York Genealogical Association is a marvelous resource. Oh, yes. They, they have a lot of material. Yeah, but I mean, for just sitting at home and typing in your computer, oh, yeah. that newspaper yeah, right. thing is just right. great. Yeah. yeah, but yeah, if you want to head down to, uh, to Danamora, to their archives, it, it's yeah. got a great, mm -hmm. you know, and they're so helpful, too. They'll, they are, yeah. They'll point you in the right direction, mm -hmm. so they've... Uh, yeah, I really applaud the people who put in that kind of mm -hmm. effort to do, to do that. The most interesting thing I thought about religion was I did not I was not aware before that there was such a rivalry between the Irish Catholics and the French Catholics. <laughs> I just never stumbled across that, and to see that you know that they wouldn't kind of cling together as fellow immigrants <laughs> or fellow you know yeah. foreigners in a strange yeah. and a ca oh, foreign no. Catholics in yeah. a strange land yeah. didn't make any sense to me. Um, and so some of the beautiful French churches that were constructed to create homes for the French who didn't feel welcome in the Irish churches, that was kind of stunning to me. And to extend that further, if you had Irish bishops, they were not kind to the French parishes. They refused to send them French-speaking priests. You know, was, oh, really? In fact, you'll see a couple cartoons we have in there that came from a whole book of <laughs> how the, the French were treated by the <laughs> Irish bishops. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, uh, you've got St. Patrick's in Rouse's Point, and you've got you know, St. Mary's here. You wonder yeah. if, if it was more the, uh, the English speakers worried about the mm -hmm. Rouse's Point Church. And, of course, in Plattsburgh has a, mm -hmm. the same situation here. They had an Irish church and a French church. And it's Monsignor Dupre was very helpful with us. Um, we went there to meet with him, and he brought boxes and boxes down from the attic. Very few photos, but he, he was trying to really help us. He was good. And oh, we appreciate that. Yeah. A Moore's boy. <laughs> yes, yes. Oh, the French name. Yes, the uh, pretty sawmill fella. Uh, so uh, when did you start putting this together? It was the uh, uh, beginning of 2017, right? Yeah, could be, yeah. And then we had a very short time frame. We had to be done by June or July. Mm -hmm. And then it took forever to finally get the book formatted and published. Why would they give you a 
Acadia gave you a, a yeah. deadline? Yeah. Oh, yeah. They were they were very strict about everything from beginning to end. Mm -hmm. So whether it's to them, if it gets printed this year or next year, what? Why? Well, why their time? They don't like to see projects drag on. They probably had some bad circumstances. Well, yeah. I mean, it's, once you start getting material to them, yeah. then I'm sure they want. Yeah. So that that situation, you yeah. start to get yeah. material to them, and then. Yes. Yeah. 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 And they wanted to see a certain amount by a certain date. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I've, I've, I'm sure that's a situation where uh, a lot of people have good intentions, and they get halfway through a project, mm -hmm. and they kind of stall. And yes. You sitting. don't realize how much work it's going to be until you <laughs> get in the middle of it. You have no idea. You have no idea. No idea. <laughs> Well, for people who like photo books, there's lots of information. Though. There's a lot of, uh, I'm hoping this is showing up on the camera, there's lots of information too, but there's a lot of photos. And uh, I think a lot of people, and that's what the whole uh, Images of America is all about, is images. Yes, so. yeah, Victoria. Now, did you ever, did you have any case where the image was clear and you sent the picture and they, they rejected it? Did they have any type of editorial control over you? No. No? No. no, no. So they don't... Uh, they don't say you can't say this or you can't say that. It's still your book, but yeah, now yeah. well, they have several editors who go through this with fine tooth comb. <coughs> well, yeah, even at the very end, they were still going yeah. through. Yeah, just amazing. to make sure spelling. You know, everything oh yeah, grammar. It's so and, easy. And accents. We were putting yeah. in accents. The accents. Right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, you start so. and they say, "Well, do you, do you want to put it in this one too? And this one too?" You know? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> So you have typewriters that have, uh, I mean, keyboards that have accents. My mine don't have an accent. <laughs> yeah. No, I, I you don't. can you can do that with Cote. Uh, you know, I just uh, we met some wonderful people. I'm looking at a photo here of Robert Pichet, who's 92 years old. We met him what? through a friend. Okay, I'm going to stand up here and start showing his book. Uh, what page? He's on page 39. He um, grew up in a French-speaking household in Winooski. Um, was in World War II. He was part of the liberation at uh, Buchenwald. But anyway, through a friend, we uh, met him at the Military Museum in Colchester. And we had a nice two, three hours with him. Wonderful man. He brought his album, which was just, just so immaculate. You know, the photos with the, all the captions. And so. so we did meet some very nice folks. And, and yeah. And right next to him, you've got uh, Gerard de Grand Prix. And, and the, the de Grand Prix family. And, uh, Chris de Grand Prix Chris, was very generous with his that's, photos. That's his uncle, right? His uncle. And then there's his, his father. dad is in there, yes. Art de Grand Prix right there. Dr. Arthur de Grand Prix. And Who was so well known and wrote several books, yes. Yeah. Yes, yeah. And very lucky. Gordon Little and I got to talk with the Dr. De Grand Prix about both of those books. And his, mm -hmm. his one on World War II was really, really priceless. So you, the book starts, uh, let's see how many pages here, 127, and before I forget, we've got to say this several times, where can people get these books? Uh, in Burlington, you have Barnes & Nobles and Phoenix Books that I'm aware of. In Plattsburgh, where we will be this afternoon, is Bookburg Bookstore, which is in the mall, which is the former Hallmark store. Okay. Um, you can get it at the gift shop at St. Anne's Shrine, we're having a book signing there tomorrow morning. Uh, we're having a book signing in August at Bookstore Plus in Lake Placid. Um, trying to think what other places. People can order it right from Arcadia or Amazon. I've had people say to me they ordered it right from Amazon. Okay. Uh, I know your museum. And I have some here. Have and some. the town is selling some. Town? The Champlain Town offices? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. And uh, in Albany? <laughs> Probably <laughs> not as many in Albany. I mean, there's a huge French population in Cahos, but that fell outside of our. Yeah, it's not the Champlain Valley. Valley. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. All right. So, uh, one of the first things we have here is a is a gathering here on page 15. Six thousand visitors to Champlain in 1907. What were they doing here? They were dedicating the first monument to Samuel de Champlain in the United States. That was two years before the uh, tricentennial. Yeah. So, and uh, you'll show some Saint Jean. Ba I think the Saint Jean Baptiste Society. I don't know if it says it in the story here. Very instrumental in that. 
and uh, we'll show some pictures here of diff different Saint Jean Baptiste celebrations. Mm -hmm. Any idea why Saint Jean Baptiste became a, a patron saint, sort of, of French Canada? I don't think he's. I don't think France uh, has anything special know. about Saint Jean Baptiste. Yeah, that's a good question, and I have several books here in Saint Jean that says that we don't know why he was chosen as the patron saint of French Canada. Because so. the Quebecers, uh, even though they've mm -hmm. kind of fallen away from. <laughs> Like a lot of us, uh, you know, a lot of mm -hmm. people, a lot of areas uh, aren't going to church as much as they used to, but they still mm -hmm. very much celebrate uh, St. Jean Baptiste this Day. This weekend, yes. If you were in the store yesterday, you would have felt their <laughs> presence, yes. And to uh, Quebecers, uh, that's more important to them than Canada Day is. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Because yeah. it's their, yeah. it's their holiday. In, yeah. in Ontario, they don't celebrate St. Jean Baptiste Day. There are French groups in Ontario. There's some French enclaves in some of the other provinces. It might, and yeah. they'll do something. Yeah, but, but it yeah. was not. But a it, not the whole province. province. No, no. Yeah. No. So yeah, I just, I just I've always wondered that. You know, and mm -hmm. I've got ancestors who are Jean Baptiste, and uh, you know, if you've got any French Canadian ancestors, chances are they hyphenated names. <laughs> there are a lot of hyphenated there's, yeah, names. Yeah, <laughs> Jean Baptiste. Uh, yes. Or Jeanne d'Arc, Joan of Arc, and uh, you know, and and so many Jean families. Jean Louis and Jean Paul and Jean Marie and oh yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and so many are. You think like uh, Louis Bedard, all he's Joseph, and all of his brothers. I know the details. All their family, well, they're all were Joseph. Guys, you were all Joseph, and then your name, or or Marie, and yeah, then your yeah. name. Yeah, so, yeah. So yeah, women and Mary, and yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's just uh, some unique things sometimes. <laughs> Part of the French Catholic influence. Yeah. So uh, we won't go through every page, obviously, but you do. Uh, Show the uh, Saint Anne, uh, Fort Saint Anne, and the mm -hmm. the, the site there, and the, you know that's a that was a French uh, outpost in the sixteen uh, middle sixteen hundreds, mm -hmm. and uh, so you are selling you're sorry you're uh, are the books for sale at Saint Anne's you said or yes, I know you're having yeah, a book signing there yeah, yeah they yeah. have the bookstore there the gift shop yeah, yeah and I yeah. and they. As we're recording this, in less than two hours, I'll be doing that book signing in Plattsburgh. So oh, you could be there too? No, no, I said you are. Oh, we will, yes, yes. So this is a whistle-stop tour here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we're popular. We're, popular. we're getting agents. <laughs> <laughs> and you went around. Did you guys, okay, uh, Did uh, this is from the Samuel D. Champlain History Center. I see uh, Jean Laframboise. Uh, Thing and the De La Villanere, Villanere. Uh, these are, I know, the La Framboise and Chez uh, Yeah, these are markers. They were along the uh, Lakeshore Road. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> uh, you know, uh, I think La Framboise, the story was there that he was here, then uh, he left during that French and Indian War. And, yes. And I don't know if he came back or not. But. And one of these guys really brought the, uh, the apple orchards. Uh, Jean-Laurent He established North Country Apple Orchard. Yeah. And of course, his name is Strawberry. Yeah, La Framboise. <laughs> Speaking of French, it's raspberry. Raspberry. Oh, raspberry. I thought that was that was that was Framboise. No, oh, it's raspberry. I've been misled. Fries and strawberry. Fries is a strawberry. Oh, oh. So Framboise is raspberry. Okay. And then we can't forget uh, De Chazy. Chazy was named yeah. after uh, yeah. a member of the Cadena Sadai who was killed by the Iroquois. Yes, mm -hmm. and uh, yeah, he was over at Fort St. Anne and decided to go fishing across the lake. Yeah. <laughs> he came over here and didn't return. And uh, I did see a couple of years ago somebody writing a newspaper article giving him a first name, and I said, How does this guy know? And I've never seen anybody else actually. That yes, we knew I, what his first name was. Yes, I found it in the list of the soldiers of Kevin I thought we put it in here. Did you? Um, it Nicholas, Nicolas Nicolas de Chazy de Chazy. with an accent. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So he did find his name, because I know for many years I know they didn't, uh, they didn't know, know what his first name I was. Know. Well, we were celebrating the Kevin Yasaye's 350th. So mm -hmm. I have a couple books on those guys. So, yeah. They uh, located them. All right, now, Franco-American, uh, you speak French. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, I'm Franco-American. Uh, I don't speak French. My parents, as I told you off camera, my mother uh, Trudeau was uh, living there in Kings Bay and uh, when she went to school she spoke no English. Did you speak English when you went to school? No. No, so you... we only spoke French at home, so I didn't yeah. know a single word. Yeah. Yeah. I was the oldest in the family, so no. So uh, I didn't know yes or no. And my fa <laughs> my father's side, you know, the, my grandmother spoke good English. My father spoke, you know, could speak French or English, because you know. But uh, my parents never passed that on to us. I think part of it was because my mother was embarrassed about not being able to speak English, mm -hmm. so she didn't want that burden on us. But, you know, if I had that choice, I would have spoke French one day and English the next day, you know. How about you, Kimberly? Do you speak any French at all? I do, only because I've done some research before, so I, I read it much better than I speak it, but, yeah. Yeah, I, so yeah, you read it. Uh, I used to, the TV Guide used to have the French shows there, and I'd read through there, and I could get a gist of what... Mm -hmm. But if, if if somebody read that to me and spoke those words, mm -hmm. I wouldn't have known what the heck they were yeah, saying. Yeah. But by reading it, uh, so how how many generations do your, your parents speak it? Your grandparents? No, who, uh, no, my grandparents don't speak it either. I mean, just some words <laughs> that I've kind of filtered down. They used the words for some things that I, when I was growing up, I never really understood. But they were actually French words that they were using for things. Um, Mostly cursing. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Well, my great grandmother used to. I think she, the dog was Chishan, and I think Chishan means mm -hmm. little dog. Little dog, yeah. Little yeah. Dog, yeah. yeah. But other she little bit. things too she throughout. Bit. Yeah. That that you pick up, but <laughs> mm -hmm. just some of the folklore. I, I I remember always being told about the Lugaru, and how my grandfather would tell all of us grandchildren the, the story of the Lugaru. Boogeyman. <laughs> did not know that that was a sort of a French mm -hmm. cultural story <laughs> until many many years later. How about French cuisine, uh, uh, meat pies? Yeah. Well, that's the, the Canadian, because you have to remember when they came from France to the New World, they had to make do what they could find, So, and then they raised their pigs, so there's a lot of pork, and salt <laughs> pork is big in the French-Canadian families, and, and then the meat pies, and some, some of them have pork, there are different recipes. And, of course, the maple syrup was big, and, and they used what they could. So you really can't compare French-Canadian cooking to French-French cooking. No, no, but uh, our, our ancestors, very few of them, oh. came to America direct from France. Oh, no, they, they all came, came through. Back. Yeah, yeah so they're all French-Canadians before so they were... So we ate, yeah, pretty much the same, you know, puts in chaumard and all those good stuff, you know, pâté chinois, and, oh, yeah, there's all those French dishes, you know. Yeah. French Canadian dishes. Well, I, I uh, applaud uh, Mike Tobin, who had uh, Steamies, which became Burger King and no longer in the operating right now. But when he operated, opened up Steamies, he brought in his brother Pat as a chef, and they were the first ones in this area that I know of that uh, brought in poutine. Mm -hmm. And now poutine is something that's served in. Yeah, Every, everywhere. everywhere around But here. you know, that wasn't something I grew up with. That's a new dish. No, no I, me either. That's not basically French Canadian. But I mean, it, it started there, yeah. but it's recent vintage, yeah. I, I would think so, but it's. Yeah. Uh, I didn't yeah. grow up with that, yeah. And Kimberly's saying, what's poutine? No, I know what it is. It actually has become quite trendy. Oh, yeah. They have it now, you know, it was at the, they had a, a truck of it at the Saratoga Race Course last year. Did they? Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, I know they sell it in, in Florida too now yeah. because, yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. <laughs> all over the place. It's quite good, so. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> May not be good for you with all that gravy and yeah, cheese yeah, curds, yeah. but. <laughs> That's right. That's right. Yeah. We don't always eat because we want it. Because <laughs> it's, it's good for us, yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. So if there's some pages here, I know you folks are going to be watching your, your wristwatches here, that I'm going to flip through these page by page. Something comes to me, I'll bring it up, but if you want to, if there's something that you definitely want to talk about, uh, we can do it here. Of course, right here in Champlain, uh, I assume this is at yeah, St. Mary's Church, Father Shanyo. Uh, he's the, he's well, the he guy who... He was a leader and a uh, he, force. He was a force. Now, he's the one who was buried there at the, at the church. at St. the right, church. He brought right. the monument. He was responsible for a lot of things, yeah. Um, he brought the sisters here in 1906 to start. But we had had a Catholic school before with Mr. St. Max. Right. Uh, in fact, I... 
you and I have shared a report that was written by Mr. St. Max in 1896 that Father Shania was going to deliver, and the last line said, we're going to try something new next year. We'll have English in the afternoon. <laughs> <laughs> so he was teaching in French. Of course, Mr. St. Maxon was from France. Was he? Yeah, I think we have that mentioned in here. Yes. Uh, yes. See, he had a store. Yeah. He was also the clerk for the village of Champlain for 40-some years. Oh, yeah. was he? Narcisse Pasha St. Maxine. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. His, <laughs> his son was best known in the area as being a, a bartender over <laughs> at the Meridian Hotel. <laughs> Uh, very distinguished. His son is so distinguished looking. Oh, he was always nice dressed looking, like a nice uh, looking man. Yeah, uh, always looked like he was wearing a tuxedo. And yeah, I don't know. Tall mustache. Yeah. I don't know if you were in the area when Mrs. Saint Maxon was still with us, Mrs. Francis Saint Maxon Kimberly, but uh, she was just an outstanding lady. And she was a lot of fun. She was, but she was a Shay Z person. She, she's in that. Uh, she was Irish. Yeah. yeah well, she was in the. Uh, that 1921 uh, yearbook mm -hmm. that Shay Z put out, and she's in there. So mm -hmm. yeah, <laughs> she's quite the lady. Okay, uh, we got a steamboat here. Uh, a licensed uh, a captain who was a female. Yep, she's reported to be the first female steamboat captain captain in the world. Philomena Astigi de Monique is that? <laughs> How'd I do? Good. <laughs> <laughs> what do you, what do you uh, teach at uh, Siena? American history. history American and history. history. Okay. Don't get into the French part uh, of American history. Not or? very much. Just you know, <laughs> World War One, World War Two, a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> okay. But feel free to jump in here. You know, don't. Uh... I think it's a great credit to the French that the uh, and it's documented in here with the uh, honor roll from Champlain but when you look at list of veterans from these communities that's where the names really show up and stand out in terms of the percentages mm -hmm. the large percentage of people who went and fought for these communities in the wars that were of French heritage mm -hmm. yes that's certainly you know well of course the population was comprised of so many of those folks that uh, mm -hmm. that, uh, that was bound to happen but yeah, they they weren't afraid to get out there, and I know my again my mother's side. Uh, I think there were six Trudeau boys in World War Two, mm -hmm. mm -hmm. and I, they, at least five or six of them met up at one time over there in Europe. Right? Right? Yeah, because you don't always see the French names, you know, in the in the board of trustees or the 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 mayor's positions or you know any of the sort of appointed or or, or elected positions, but you always see them in uh, large preponderance on those memorials to the veterans. Yes, that's right. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm sure there had to be some kind of uh, class feeling uh, between the French, here, even in our village here in Champlain, because they spoke French and, you know, like Oak Street, we're right here at the edge of Oak Street, and that, that's known as Snob Hill, you know, just that I'm sure they, there was that feeling of uh, being lesser because they didn't speak English and it's an English country. Uh, well, my husband tells me um, that uh, if a Frenchman was walking on the sidewalk of Oak Street and some an Oak Street resident was coming down, the Frenchman got off the sidewalk. Really? On Oak Street? Mm -hmm. right, right here. <laughs> But Probably happen other places. Well, that wouldn't happen in French Village, though. <laughs> as Kimberly said, it, um, you know, that the French were not prominent. Uh, they weren't the, the owners of the businesses. And, yeah. Well, they became so. You know, we well, eventually, that. when, um, you know, you had a wave of French who came and bought farms, like Bayshards and Racines and, you know, in the 30s, that, that things changed a little bit. And they bought farms that had been owned by the English-speaking people. But yeah. I think they did feel the need to prove their citizenship in the wars, and I think that's partially why. Uh, we've uncovered one group in Burlington. It was actually an organization created during the war to show that the French were supportive of the war effort, were giving to the bond drives, were doing what they could to donate uh, to the soldiers' mm -hmm. needs, because they wanted to prove that citizenship. They wanted to prove that they were part of the community. Yeah. Um, it had a, I forget the name of it now. Uh, we couldn't actually find a, an image of it, but there was an organization that was created just of the French to say, look, 
We support the war effort. We are uh, a backbone of this community. Yeah, well, you know, uh, so many organizations uh, got their founding on ethnic backgrounds, so I'm sure that the, that's, that's the case there, you know. If you were French uh, soldiers and you banded together just naturally, you just, yeah, mm -hmm. you know, uh, and, you know, I, you know, again, I mentioned the, I worked for Woodman of the World 40 years ago, and uh, Woodman is a fraternal order, like next door here we have Knights of Columbus, but it's open to everybody, but in New York State, there was the Polish lodges, mm -hmm. we had a Jewish lodges, and that, even in that organization, mm -hmm. the lodges yeah. were kind of uh, mm -hmm. based on ethnicity, yeah, you know, yeah, and yeah. so if you lived in the Buffalo area, uh, you were Polish, yeah. if you were part of that Woodman. You know, yeah. it's just the, the way it worked out. If you yeah. were living in, if you were in Brooklyn, well, you were Jewish in that in that particular lodge. So, but they they'd get together and they'd work together <laughs> as a unit, mm -hmm. but not uh, on a local level. Mm -hmm. So, I'm sure that's that was the case. You you need that security so you band together locally, and that's that's probably what was happening there. Mm -hmm. Here's a name that's certainly uh, prominent in French Canadian name La Fontaine. La Fontaine. Mm -hmm. uh, there's aren't too many folks in the area that don't have some, particularly in the, you get into a little bit west of here in the moors, they don't have some La Fontaine or La Fountain in their in their background. And, and spelled three different ways, yes. <laughs> yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And uh, some are La Fountains, and a lot of them still want to be called La Fontaine because that's, that was their name. La Fontaine, yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Another thing I thought was interesting, and, and Celine was able to kind of share some personal stories about this with me, was the love of music and how that became such an important part of the culture. Uh, the parties, the dances, and I remember my uh, great-grandmother telling me about the dances. Uh, what is it, Hallerton Schoolhouse? I think it was the Hallerton Schoolhouse where they used to go and have dances on Saturday night uh, up in Quebec. Um, but this focus on music, and what did you call those parties? The block dances? Uh, you said the, uh, the the kitchen the kitchen dances. Oh yeah, yeah. That that was very common. Families would get together and you'd move everything out of the kitchen and <laughs> dance. And there was always one person in the group that was a fiddler. You know, in my case, my father was a fiddler. You know, it was oh. great. And, uh, those poor houses that are pretty good. They would do <laughs> that. <laughs> They they could have fun. <coughs> they could have fun. They had a joie de vivre with amongst the families and yeah. And in Winooski, the the fraternal organizations, we found so many images of them putting on musical performances, mm, have a lot putting of, yeah. on plays, dramatic performances, um, as a, really a kind of a key part of yeah. of mm -hmm. their reason for being to entertain yeah. each other. And they own the buildings. Too, yeah. In some cases, they own the buildings. Well, you know, you didn't have uh, entertainment on your. Mm -hmm. you know, and it, television. Yeah, and, you know, no um, television. You they know. made their own entertainment. Yeah, you know, they, yeah. And uh, well, it wasn't until the 20s or 30s, probably, that they got radios. Mm -hmm. and, you know. But you and I, Celine, are both old enough to remember when there was no TV in the house. Oh, my God, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> and no phone, even. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we'd uh, sit around at night listening to the radio, and that was it. Mm -hmm. You know, that was your entertainment. Mm -hmm. So. And in my case, my mother would never let us have the radio on in English. Oh, really? My mother was <laughs> very French, yes. We only had one newspaper in the house, and it was La Presse out of Montreal. Oh, wow. So you never knew oh, what was I going on? I taught myself how to read by reading La Presse, yeah, before I went to school. <laughs> so I knew French when I was school. I <laughs> had to be taught English, yeah. <laughs> But my mother could survive in Champlain because Champlain was that French. Oh, sure. You know, yeah. she could go to the AMP, and Monsieur Dumont was her friend. You know, he was the manager there, and we had French-speaking priests in church, who gave their sermons in French and English sometimes. Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh, yeah, Father de Rocher. <laughs> oh, yes, and Monsignor Bro, and I'm pr I'm older than you are, so I remember <laughs> Monsignor Bro. But yeah, mm -hmm. so she she survived. Okay. Yeah. Well. And the family was close by, you know, the Racine family was large, and you mingled with the family. You didn't go outside the family. Yeah, well, you didn't uh, need to be out uh, on the street every day. You didn't no. need to mingle with people every day. You had enough mm -hmm. to do. You had uh, Raising yeah. your kids on yeah. a farm. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. You had enough to do to keep you busy. You didn't uh, right. worry about your leisure time. That's right. 
leisure time wasn't <laughs> it wasn't invented yet. <laughs> yet there was such a strong French population here, and we had such a hard time finding pictures. I know to demonstrate. Know. You know, any in Clinton community County, get together, the French Village, anything. Yeah, in Clinton County, very very difficult. New York has almost no history of uh, Franco Americans. You ask book dealers when you go to a conference, do you have anything in Frank? What is that? You know, they've yeah. never heard of it. Yeah, well, if the you... New England states have done much better, and they're still celebrating. And in some places, they're still trying to save their churches as, as Franco American groups and all this. You don't see that here. Yeah. I mean, you hit on it when you talked about you know the people in the community who write the history books are the ones who decide what goes in. Right. And if the French weren't in that sort of group of people who were making those decisions, the photographs go through families. And how yeah. often do you see? You know, younger people not want the photographs, they end up right. going in the garbage, going to auction. And so the, the documentation of anything that was French about their life is gone, you know, which is why it was so incredibly difficult to find pictures. Yeah, it, it, was, very, it was very difficult. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, the, what was the French part of their life uh, existing? <laughs> but even in St. Jean-Baptiste Day. We couldn't find any pictures of no, a no, celebration, no, no. Really? you know, no, no, no. Of, of what they did, of who was there, uh -huh. of, of the activities. You know, we could find some parade pictures that would primarily be what we would be yeah. locating. Um, but, you know, in general, it was difficult. People didn't take as many pictures back well, then Well, obviously, yeah. yeah. True. It's, yeah. True. And so what's left is... There are images of the French communities and the French quarters, the French villages, little Canada's. You know, street views yeah. even, just, mm -hmm. just something yeah. to document that they existed. That's right. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's what's interesting sometimes. You see a, a picture of some people and you, you kind of ignore them. You're looking behind them to see <laughs> what buildings were there. Or that's right. What they were standing in front because exactly. you want to know yeah. what the community was like. That, that's it, you know. Yeah. But as Celine said, we, don't, we didn't take a lot of pictures back then. It was expensive and uh, people didn't need to... And some to, of these to take selfies just, every day. Like. We've just <laughs> forgotten about some of these people. You know, fortunately we had contacts who had contacts, you know. Again, I'm looking on page 25, the two Garen brothers, one became a Monsignor. Um, if it weren't for my friend Jane West, I wouldn't know about these two guys who were raised in Paris Mills. Really? Yeah. And it's a, these are 1R Garens too, not the, yeah, not the 2Rs. Are. Yeah, not that we're all so familiar with. So both these guys are from Paris Mills, huh? Mm -hmm. hmm. So you know. Well, I noticed you said Perry's Mills, not Perry Mills. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's Perry's Mills. I know it's Perry's Mills. Yeah. <laughs> so. But the, unfortunately, our maps no longer <laughs> agree with that. <laughs> well, here's one of Leander Bouye, uh, the 14th mayor of the city of Plattsburgh. Mm -hmm. Very prominent, St. Peter's Parish, yes. Yeah. Uh, do you ever know your your father-in-law? I got a picture of William Paquette here. He must have still been around when oh, yes, yes. when you were young. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Definitely a great man. Mm -hmm. yeah. Now he broke into the, this uh, English community. In 1941, he was on the Champlain School Board. He was the president of the school board. The only Frenchman on that <laughs> board. <laughs> Uh, that was a bit unusual, especially since he was sending his son to Catholic school. Yeah. Well, you'd think like like this. Uh, uh, I know La Fontaine was part of the uh, tercentennial. You'd think some of these people were prominent here in our area, and uh, they didn't necessarily translate that to just things like the school board or yeah. or mayorship or whatever. Huh? Well, Louis Camille La Fontaine was he was a <laughs> clerk in this building. <clears throat> In the bank here. Okay. Yeah, he had no children, so that, yeah, but uh, yeah. I don't know what other boards he was on. But, yeah. There's a here's a Jean Baptiste I see right here, and I see a, a picture of Noah John Rondo. How did Noah John get in this this book here? A famous hermit. <laughs> He's French. He's That's French. right. <laughs> Notorious and French. <laughs> We have Noah Rondo, but we didn't have French Louis in there. We didn't put French Louis. <laughs> okay, yeah, let's see. We, so you folks must have some pictures in here or some topics here that you think we really got to uh, give some credit to. Here's, uh, this must be the page 42. Is this uh, one of those things you're, you're showing here with an 
Irish uh, bishop. Uh, Irish bishop. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, not uh, doing much for the <laughs> Canadians. Do you see what the Ecole Francaise, that first little slot, very mm -hmm. little money in there. Ecole yeah. Irlandaise, a little bit more. Yeah, and pour moi. Yeah, for me. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. Right next to there, and one of the first uh, churches in the Catholic Northern, churches in the area. Northern New York, yes. Yeah, and unfortunately that is closed. There's a heck of a good gathering there. Probably 80% uh, of those are Bay Shards. Tatrels and Lorraine's. Yeah, but if you. We did that story years ago on the uh, yes. uh, that church. So it's amazing how many uh, you know, in the early 1900s, how many Bayshard families there were. Well, there. they it's were just, very large families. And yeah. I, I don't know how many came from Canada, but yeah, yeah there's a nice gathering at, uh, at Isle of Mott on the shrine. page 47, mm -hmm. St. Anne's Shrine. And of course, you couldn't uh, put a book together without. Uh, Putting in the fellow on the next page, could you? Father Boucher. No. <laughs> Father Maurice Boucher. He was quite a force. Yeah, very, very pious person. You just uh, uh, felt uh, very honored when you were in his presence. I think you know. You just uh, yes. And he, he married me and Larry. So. Did That's right. I remember. I had a testimonial. Mark Berry saying. <laughs> yes. You guys decided to get get married after they took the toll off the bridge. The bridge that's right. <laughs> in Rouse's Point. <laughs> he did. Larry this was so the, tight. When the bridge became toll free, <laughs> they decided they could get married and cross into Vermont. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Back to Mark. Get yeah. Larry about it. Well, there's a there's my church right here. Well, not mine, but you know, Saint Mary's is pictured in here. And we talked too about the um, the fact that the schools and the churches went hand in hand, and that was all part of keeping French communities together to preserve the language, to preserve the customs, mm -hmm. you know, to to preserve the history. Uh, that there were sort of insular communities within the larger towns and cities in which they were found. And so the, the, they would go to the Catholic Church, the, the children would go to the associated school, um, they would have their celebrations and, and fraternal organizations within that small community, and that's how they kept it alive. That's mm -hmm. how they kept the French culture alive. Mm -hmm. So we have a, a whole host of churches and their associated schools in here as well. Well, you just can't talk about the uh, uh, French-Canadian and Franco-American history without including the churches, because mm -hmm. it was so much part and of their life. And, uh, <coughs> and I think of, uh, you know... And then the schools, they, they built schools. Too. Yeah. <coughs> you know, my ancestors, I think of, a, you know, going to church on a 10 below zero day on a horse and wagon. Mm -hmm. yeah, you got to be dedicated. <laughs> they, they were, they were. Oh, I grew up like that. You probably did, too. You didn't miss church. Well, not with a horse and wagon, no. 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 <laughs> Maybe you grew up with a horse and wagon, but I didn't. Almost. Almost. <laughs> And St. Michael's College is, was, uh, was that a well, French Saint Canadian? St. Michael's College was founded by the Society of St. Edmund, who came from France okay. via Canada. So it was originally very French. They had, the Society of St. Edmund also had a college called St. Michael's in France. I just visited a few weeks ago, Collège oh. Saint Michel in France. Yeah. So, they, they, were, they were a French group when they first came here. And of course, St. Peter's. This was a St. Peter's school. Now, this was a it became a girls' school, didn't it? Uh, page fifty-six. Well, Duville Academy. Yeah. Well, it's a no. There's a, well, there's Duville, and there's also St. Pierre Academy de St. Pierre. Yeah. I don't know if one became the other. Well, I think uh, with MAI being a boys' school, mm -hmm. I think uh, for years uh, St. Peter's. Was girls. Was the girls, I mm -hmm. think. Yeah. I think that's how it... Uh... We never got a photo of MAI, did we? No, we wanted to, because again, MAI with the oblates was uh, being the French background. Um, and they have marvelous archives. But by the time we really knew how to access those archives, which are huge, 
it was too late for the book because that would have been a great history also. Yeah, I know when they still had their their, their spot there before they built a new school, Seton Academy, Seton the Catholic, uh, they had Brother Rene had a nice mm -hmm. little history room there with all kinds of pictures. Yes, yeah. yeah. Just amazing yeah. records. But uh, when they moved into the new location, I'm sure they didn't have room for all those records that he had there. Well, apparently they are somewhere, but we, we just, the contacts we made didn't lead us to a successful conclusion. So. Well, I'll be in Chapter 2. <laughs> Volume 2. <laughs> <laughs> right, she says. <laughs> yeah, start tomorrow. <laughs> All right, now you got some stores. You got uh, let's uh, let's read the I'll read the names of the categories here. Uh, and you got leaders and citizens, religion, work, Winooski, and culture. So I'm in the work area here, and uh, these are a lot of stores. A lot of stores and businesses. Yeah, uh, they had meat markets. And now, surprise! You only had. Uh, I haven't got to it yet here. One picture, I think, of a farm, the Dubois farm. I'm not surprised you had that one, <laughs> but uh, so many were farmers. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But, but again, it's yeah, hard yeah, to get pictures. They're not taking pictures. The Dubois did, but you know, the rest of us were out there working. Yeah, I know. You <laughs> <laughs> yeah. didn't have time to pose for a picture, you know. You you know who thought of taking a picture? No, <laughs> it was really farming, or you worked in the quarries, or you worked in the Adirondacks uh, with lumber, mm -hmm. you worked in the mills, you worked as a um, uh, boat uh, person on the canal. Mm -hmm. There's a canal Those boat right really here. Those are the, the mm -hmm. primary areas that we found the French and Canadian populations working in. And we tried to kind of have a representative photo of each, but again, it wasn't always easy to mm -hmm. yeah. document those things with a picture. That's right. Yeah. Uh, let's see, you got a store here, William Broder, William Pocket, Henry LaFontaine, Robert Bester gathered inside William Broder's hardware store in Champlain. Where was, where's that hardware store, Celine? Well, it's, uh, it was, it became the Ralph Lois store. And okay. It's, it's that one, right, still, right. the building still exists, yeah. Okay. Which is, uh, not too far from where St. Mary's School was at first, was that right. Cedar Street that comes out there, I think, mm -hmm. it, Rounds that corner. Yeah. Uh, Falcon. This is, uh, on page sixty-six. Is that uh, the Falcon store that I remember? That That's looks like the it. Falcon store you remember, and uh, somebody's giving new life to it. Clark Herdick is in there. He's yeah. <laughs> he's renovating it. But uh, Henry Falcon is the fellow who was there when I was a, a kid. This is uh, William, and then Henry. Uh, was a survivor, I guess. That uh, I'm. I think it could be one and the same. I I couldn't. You're not sure uh, if, it, it if it's William Henry, Henry, Henry William, or, and he went by you know both names. Yeah, he was sure. a frail old man when I knew him. So. Yeah. Uh, well, wait. It says his son William managed it after Henry's death in 1932. Oh, okay. yeah. But I thought the guy I knew was Henry was Henry, Henry guess, Falcon. Yeah. So that might be a, a Williams. Yeah. Son, I don't know. Not sure. That uh, that was a store. I think it must have closed in the early. I graduated in '64, and I don't recall it being open when I graduated. But I was open mm -hmm. in, before that. Mm -hmm. and I think it had closed by then. Just as the meat locker, I think, had closed by probably right around that time could too. Be, Bob Dumont's, be. which was in that building. You know, the old meat locker fell down. Uh, seven, eight years ago. So there were two pharmacies side by side because uh, wasn't uh, another pharmacy, Hogs? Hogs was in my lifetime, but there were a lot of pharmacies before that. We have an exhibit downstairs that shows different pharmacies. Yeah. So even though it was a small town, they had... Yeah, the, yeah they had pharmacies. Yeah. Must have been a lot of sick people. Well, we have three banks, so it must have rich people. <laughs> and Trombley's sales, as I said. Uh, our son was our mayor for a long time. Yeah. He's a very imposing man. I remember him as a very big man. Yeah. I don't remember him, but I certainly remember yeah. his son, Liam. Oh, yeah. Yeah. 
And of course, that's the village office now here in Champlain, Trembley, Trembley's Idol, a lot of Trembley's Idol. And uh, as I said, I may have said it off camera, my uh, grandmother was a, a Trombley from the Moores Forks area. And uh, you see their, you know, their name B-L-E-Y in the early A-M-B-L-A-Y, then uh, B-L-E-Y, O-M-B-L-E-Y, and O-M-B-L-Y. T-R-O-M, uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So... A lot of it's, a, and they, it's the same person. Yeah. <laughs> you know, if you get the record, you, my grandfather would be spelled T R E M B L A Y, then T R O M B L E Y, then T R O M B L Y. I think one place, though, in the book, <laughs> uh, we uh, with the Tremblay, we have the original French. It's B L E with an accent. Accent on it, yeah. And the ink tails, of course, who can't remember the ink tails? I married an ink tail. Where's the, where's the ink tails? The ink tails bakery? 68 in the bottom. The donuts. Store. Oh, yeah, there they are. That. Oh, my gosh. That's another thing. That's the only picture we could get of the two of them. Oh, come on. Uh. <laughs> oh, no, no. That was it. Brian or one of those guys must have pictures of the. I called. They didn't. They, they, John, <laughs> oh, had it. John. John. Had it. Uh, well, maybe them working. You know, maybe they got pictures of them, but not. Yeah. At work with the, making the. But, uh, you know, you talk about falcons. You talk about this. These are buildings that really get devastated by the the floods we've had here in Champlain. There isn't much left of that little street where the Angels Bakery was. No. No. <laughs> Unfortunately, floods and fires were part of our beautification program here in the village. Yeah, yeah we lost two blocks to two separate fires uh, yeah. during my my lifetime. And here's a here's an example of a a tatro t a t r o here. Uh, what page is that? That's on page seventy three. He's in in Rutland, oh, yeah. mm -hmm. but. Uh, that's uh, certainly not the way the <laughs> the name is supposed to be well, spelt. <laughs> and we mentioned that in the caption too. Oh. Did you? Yeah. Oh yeah. We tried to make sure that each community of French in the Champlain Valley were represented. So we went to the different historical societies, and oh that's an example of you know of Rutland. They know they have such a strong French Canadian background. Yet finding, again, images that document it, even they, because mm -hmm. they had never really thought about it in those terms before. And so I came mm -hmm. in and asked, and they thought, you know, we know there's tremendous <laughs> history here. Yeah. <laughs> Just being able to demonstrate it with photos and images was very difficult. Yeah. Yeah. So a lot of legwork would Because little this results. photo was one that Arcadia wasn't thrilled with. The mm -hmm. resolution, and that it was a cracked glass plate negative. Um, but we fought in some cases to keep images in because yeah. they're just, yeah. Well, you're talking about the one on 73, Arthur yes, Dentro? Yes, 73. Yeah, that's a decent enough picture, I think, you know. You know, the sign in back may not be uh, exactly in focus, but, you know, it's, uh, I think it tells your story. So you had to fight with Arcadia to get that one in, you know. There was a couple <laughs> that were yeah. borderline and Kimberly was, <laughs> Kimberly was good at that. <laughs> What's the other one was, um, what's the party, the party, I don't even know if that ended up getting in there. The Racine one we couldn't get in. The one, the party that they have, uh, Redford, Redford Day. Oh. Oh, yeah, yeah. The Assumption. Yeah, the 15th. And yeah, 15th of Redford, yeah. 15th, 15th of Redford. Of Redford. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm sure you could get a recent picture, but you wanted something that... I wanted something that shows this is, you know, something that's gone way back. It started... It was French. Yeah. There's a, a lot of old timers that remember the little uh, La Pointe uh, lunch stop there in Margaret Street in Plattsburgh. Page 77. Yeah. yeah. Now, even this one on 76, Mr. Gagne, I met him a year ago at the Saint Jean Baptiste Mass at, Saint, at the shrine, and I said, You're Franco-American, do you have any photos? He had one. That one? was his dad. 
<laughs> remember that day we chased there? <laughs> this is after we had spent time in Burlington, probably got two photos. We chased to his house, which is quite a distance away. I had forgotten One more. I had forgotten <laughs> my <Your> purse. <laughs> oh my God, back in Burlington. <laughs> oh gosh. Oh yeah, it, so, those were the kinds of days. Yeah. So did you do you borrow the photos? I mean, if this well, is the only photo we we've got, to, so how do you to get scan copy? it right there? Yeah, we brought a scanner with us, and we'd scan it so we wouldn't have the photos. You know. Some of the people loaned us the photos, like Mr. De Grand Prix, but I returned them as soon as I could. And, you know. Yeah, it, <laughs> it really uh, upset my friend Bob then. He borrowed some photos from a, a lady in the, in the community here it's a, for a project he was putting together, posters and stuff. He, so he did it and he brought them back and she accused him of keeping her originals and bringing back copies. And just bothered the heck out of it, Bob. <laughs> yeah, people can be very. I, I had that happen to me with our Champlain book. <laughs> but <clears throat> it was a lady who uh, here in Champlain, and she was starting to develop dementia. And but I felt bad because she was sure I hadn't returned her photos. And then she found the envelope, but she still didn't think I had returned them. <laughs> oh, I'm, um, I'm sure she. If you had ten in there, she must have remembered yeah. twenty. Because it's in, in her mind, all these yeah. pictures from her past, and yeah. <clears throat> all right. Uh, let's see, what we got here. Uh, there's a lot of pictures. You got St. Albans, well represented. So it's not just the, the Clinton County area here. We're going to make oh, no, sure people to understand that. Yeah. Vermont, we stopped in um, the Swanton Historical, um, Burlington, uh, Diocese of Burlington Archives, St. Michael's Archives, uh, went to Ernie Parmelow's office, got a picture off the wall <laughs> for that yes. day. It was a boring, <laughs> rainy day. Um, well, Mr. Parmelow must have been of French descent. It sounds, yes, it sounds French. Yeah. Antonio Parmelow, yes. And he just and passed away. And his sister, with, and Marcel, asked. is married to Senator Leahy. Marcel. Leahy is Marcel Pomelo. Oh, really? I didn't know that. Mm -hmm. So lots of pictures from uh, Winooski. Uh, well, we have a chapter there because Winooski is preserved. They have a wonderful museum. If you ever have a chance to stop by, in the, in, it's right in the mill, as you come in. Uh -huh. It's not large, but she's done a nice job she putting a lot of stuff together there. And um, as I said, every year they have a French festival. It's not elaborate, but they have something. On they, page 95, there must be one, and you must have had a tough time getting this one in, Night of Rest Motel. <laughs> uh, it's a little, well, maybe it was a color originally, because the yeah. focus is a little... Not, a little frosty. Uh, we we speak French. Dial U N <laughs> four. Yeah, the, the Levine Funeral Home, it's still called that in Winiski. Yeah. And there's something that uh, we can, old folks like us can always relate to, is a creamery. Mm -hmm. uh, Arthur Buffard. So. One of the certain. things that we found interesting is on 96, you see a, a prescription for syrup of rhubarb, but some of these prescriptions or labels had lines, and they would write in French. They would translate the English and the French. For the so, That's what the line was for, a space for them to write in French for those that... Yeah, give, 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 give the yeah. instructions to the, so they can understand what they're... <laughs> They're supposed to be taken. Now, page 96, it says Richard's Pharmacy. Do you think that was Richard's <laughs> or Richard's or Richard? Oh, it was Richard, yeah. Yeah. Sure. yeah. I remember my friend Leo Richard. Richard, yeah. Then he became Leo Richard, and now yeah. his kids are Richard's. Richard, yeah. <laughs> well, no S, no S. Yeah. There is a picture of Selena here. No picture of you, Kimber? 
I know. Kimberly, no? <laughs> well, I was at the French Heritage Day last year. Sometimes we were just looking for pictures. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> There we go. Here's a Saint Jean Baptiste uh, march down uh, the streets of Champlain. Oh yes, yeah. we've used that one many times. Yeah. Well, what's nice is it shows that building that used to be <laughs> on this side, on the other side of the church, there, on the southern side of the church, there. It's no longer there. So, mm -hmm. not sure if that was a horse barn or. Somebody used this photo, one of the Plattsburgh books or something, and they said it was Plattsburgh. Well, it's not Plattsburgh, it's Champlain. <laughs> yeah. you, can, you can see the church, you well, can yeah. see yeah. way in the back with Champlain Academy. Yeah. Yeah, that's definitely... And then the picture down at the bottom is Trepanier. That's definitely downtown Champlain. This is where my husband's office was, that building. Yeah. Next the to the hardware Jean store. Baptiste and Champlain, yeah. <laughs> Page 105. There's some girls that don't look Page overly up. happy. <laughs> they don't look overly happy to be having their picture taken. No. <laughs> been told don't smile, I guess. Well, of course, a lot of those old folks, old pictures, nobody smiled. They don't smile. No. Just stand there and never frown. But it's, again, it's a Saint Jean Baptiste celebration. Courtesy of Assumption College. Where's Assumption College? It's a mess. Massachusetts? Assumption? Yeah, I'm pretty sure. They yeah. had a, a nice archive. Oh, Assumption yeah. College, yeah. They real French. Like the University of Maine in Orono is a French center, too. And they got a picture from the French Quarter here in, in Plattsburgh. And mm -hmm. Then uh, you'll notice the Garen Homestead at Paris Mills on the other, on page 107. Yeah. Uh -huh. On the bottom. Yeah. Uh, above it is a picture from French Village and then the, the Garen. Again, a 1R Garen. Mm -hmm. well, quite large gathering. They made sure to get the, the horse and buggy in there in the, in the picture. <laughs> yeah, people like to show off everything they own. <laughs> Isle Lamont had a nice historical society with some images documenting the French as well, which was nice. The lady there was very, very nice to us. Yeah, let's see, where is this one there? This is the log house is in the Isle mm -hmm. There's an ash line. Uh, this is in the, in the Rapids Road, Champlain. The okay, ash line farm. The ash line farm. Then on page so, 110, we wanted to show the um, large families French Canadians um, normally had, so we yeah. picked one here. And the Menards. The Menards, and then we had the Parmelos. Okay. And I'm sure there are many others, but well, that yeah. <laughs> happened to be two we knew. Yeah, I could have showed This is the one we took off for Ernie's uh, wall. Okay. But the Menard one was not easy to get either. Remember that day? Yeah. I called my friend Roland Menard and said, I don't have any but contact my sister, Sister Elizabeth. And she lives in the old rectory on Cumberland Head. What's the number? Well, I don't know if she lives with Sister So-and-so. <laughs> well, we finally got that number, so I spoke to Sister Elizabeth, and she says, yes, I have a photo of the family. However, I'm leaving tomorrow to go to my <laughs> mother house in Massachusetts. I said, well, Kimberly's coming up, and we'd like to... So she said, well, let me leave it at the rectory at St. John's. <laughs> we walked in the rectory at St. John, and they're like, what do you want, you know? <laughs> well, we're here to scan a photo that Sister Elizabeth Menard left, you know? And that, that ended up being one photo, but that's what you go through on a rainy day, remember? And then we go to City Hall, probably the same rainy day it was, and we went into pictures of mayors. Well, the mayor's office was closed. The, the clerk's office was closed. We finally found somebody to let us in the hall where the mayor's office. <laughs> Everything was always, you know. So at the end of the day, you might have two photos and Arcadia rejected one, you know. <laughs> uh, we'll call this a labor of love, I hope. Yeah. You, 
You had to want to do this. This was Jim Brangan who put us up to this. <laughs> and then Smiley Willette's yes. son came in here and shared a photo with us. So. The Sunset Rainbow, Smiley yeah. and Alfreda. Yeah. She was a FNAF, another yeah. French name. Yeah, and they were certainly uh, popular on both sides of the border. Yeah. You listen to their old radio shows and uh, they're uh, heading one direction on Thursday and another direction on Friday and they're just they were on the go all the time and still had time for, for oh, a little yeah. while for a daily show. Yeah. yeah. So a hundred and twenty seven pages actually hundred and twenty eight if you count the and they're not all photos, they're little descriptors, they're a little bit... We did not do a, a thorough history of the immigration of French Canadians to the United States, but uh, <laughs> wasn't the purpose of the book, really. Yeah, got some good introductions to the chapters. On uh, page 120, we've got some couple, a big, large uh, photo here, but okay. blank spots. Did it bother you to have a, a couple of... Blank spots like that? Did you, well, you it would have been you, nice if we could have had more. But so yeah. you basically put in all the pictures that you could uh, yeah. justify we putting did, in. We did. I mean, it wasn't. There was not a case of us kind of narrowing down because <laughs> <laughs> we had to fight for every picture that we got. And we did. And some were, you know, stretched like Pierre Lavier at the mouth of the Great Cheesy River. Well, he was prominent here in Champlain, but. I got hold of Mary Jo Van Acker, but can you tell me about Pierre Lavier? I remember what Larry had told me, but you know, I wanted a little bit more. Yeah, I did make it in the Redford. Yeah. It's not a great photo. Okay, anything else, uh, ladies? Uh, I know you've got, the, in just a little over an hour, you've got a book signing. Be, book signing, so you, you don't want to show up at the last moment. But. Puffing and puffing. It's our first book signing. We're very excited. <laughs> so. okay. We're hoping that the large population of people who <laughs> descended from all of these Franco-Americans is interested in what's to know. They don't, their they don't even realize that they're descendants of Franco-Americans. That's the sad part. Yeah. Well, you know, once you get into genealogy, it's it's incredible what you find. And, mm -hmm. you, know, you find out you're related to yourself and all kinds, <laughs> <laughs> all kinds of good stuff. <laughs> Uh, you know, and you mentioned the uh, that North uh, American Canadian, North American Canadian, New York genealogy. Yes. Uh, Denimora, just an amazing resource. Mm -hmm. so you've got the whole summer off, uh, Kimberly. No, I'm no? working. <laughs> <laughs> she just published a book. Oh. Uh, Kimberly has her PhD in history and uh, her thesis, telling tales here. Um, it's on World War One. Oh. So, Thank you. Centennial of the end of the war is this year, and right. I just published a book on uh, American memory of the war, remembering World War One in America. Well, oh, so how did you research that? Um, you know, too many I looked at films, I looked at books, I looked at things that might have brought the memory of the war down through the generations, and just looked at why it really didn't. You know, people don't think about World War One anymore. People don't know why it was fought, who fought, where they fought. <laughs> Um, it was largely eclipsed by the Second World War after the 1940s and has a lot of important lessons for what's going on today. So it's, I think, an important topic for people to know about. Yeah, sometimes uh, you don't uh, learn from history, you repeat. <laughs> yeah. So mm -hmm. sometimes you think, uh, well, maybe we shouldn't do that. But to look back and say, well, we didn't do it that time and look what happened. And so, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, it's also sad, I think, that so many people fought in that war and died, and oh, there death. seems to be little, you know, remembrance of it. And mm -hmm. I think people remembering all the pain and suffering really does a world of good when it comes to deciding whether or not we're going to think about a war again. <laughs> we don't seem to learn. No. Nope. Uh, no, it's unfortunate, but there are a lot of a lot of evil folks out there that uh, think this is the only way to mm -hmm. achieve their ends. Well, we appreciate you folks taking time off from your busy whistle stop uh, schedule here. Well, we thank you. Uh, thank you, Colin. And again, the, it's called Images of Franco Americans in the Champlain Valley. 
is Kimberly LeMay LaCourcy and Celine Racine Paquette with a forward by James Brannigan. Or Brangan, no, no extra vowel in there. And it's available mm -hmm. where? Well, in Plattsburgh, it's at um, Bookburg, where we will be in an hour. And uh, maybe Lake City Books, I'm not sure. You can order at Amazon or directly from Arcadia. Or Barnes & Nobles in um, Burlington, or Phoenix Books in Burlington. And the bookstore in Waterbury, Vermont. Or here, the Samuel. And here we're selling them, the town of Champlain and St. Anne Shrine gift shop. Okay, and if you don't know what uh, how Arcadia, there's their website, www.arcadiapublishing.com. And pick yourself up a, a copy of this book and add it to your, your collection of local history. Thank you very much, ladies. Thank and you. the Champlain book's still available, too. <laughs> <laughs> At all those locations. Yes. Yeah, <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.